Chuck Orlick, the Marine actor. And for 36 years, I used my hobby of historical reenactment to bring the subject to life for my students in the classroom. Well, I'm not in the classroom anymore, but I've still got a room full of garb at the house and that I cannot bear to get rid of. I still have a passion for bringing the past to life, and I like to play history detective. So I had to find a way to repurpose myself, and I decided that I would pursue California history because that was a subject that I didn't get to teach while I was in the classroom. So I started with the missions and I stumbled across Presidios and Asistencias as part of this uh, journey and I went up and down the state telling the tales of these places in garb and doing a lot of research and I also explored Northern California and during my research I ended up finding that when the missions were desecularized often the buildings themselves became essentially strip malls and there would be shops and saloons in there and that kind of twisted my brain around and then finding out that there were oh, famous outlaws and banditos who frequented these saloons that had me intrigued. Well, I started following those trails. And when I started uh, chasing banditos, I barely knew who Tiburcio Vazquez was. He's the guy that Vazquez Rocks is named for. But then I ended up, while researching him, and I was finding pictures of all the gang members there was a gang member that was considered his lieutenant, Clodovio Chavez, and the only picture I could find of him was a drawing of his head in a jar of alcohol. That's gotta be a story. So I'm following that uh, trail of Clodovio Chavez, who is the lieutenant of Tiburcio Vazquez. I hope you stick with me on my journey. We know that the gang's last job was in February of 1873, and it was a fail. It was the attempted robbery of the wealthy cattle baron Henry Miller at the Fireball Ferry, which crossed the San Joaquin River. Miller wasn't there, so now the gang has crossed over the mountains. Currently, we're traveling along present-day Highway 25 through modern-day Tres Pinos, and this is the highway that is going to replace the old Hollister San Benito Road. We are on our way to the town of Piscinas, which used to be Tres Pinos. So we're following the trail. This is going to lead us to what is called the Tres Pinos tragedy. I'm in the town of Piscinas, a population of roughly 200. This used to be the town called Tres Pinos. And, you know, the town that I just drove through used to be Piscinas. That's now Tres Pinos. And there was a whole big story about uh, the railroad had agreed that they would uh, build the railroad to Tres Pinos and then they kind of quit and say, hey, let's just swap the names. So they fulfilled that obligation. Okay. Why I'm here? It's a monument to Tiburcio Vasquez and here's what we need to kind of cover. Okay. Vasquez has, is putting together a new game. Really, he's kind of mixing and matching. He's bringing in parts that he's had before. Um, and you know, some of his other uh, members are gone. Juan Soto, the human wildcat. Uh, well, he was basically six foot tall of mean. All right? He has been taken down by Sheriff Harry Morris uh, from Alameda County. 
and uh, Morris had to finally kill Soto. Another member of the gang that got taken down, uh, his name was Procopio Bustamante. Everyone just called him Procopio because Procopio liked the sound of Procopio. And his first name, really his first name was Tomas. Procopio has an interesting heritage. He might or might not have been Joaquin Murrieta's nephew. And he eventually gets taken down by Morris, who finds him in a, let's say it was a house of ill repute. Seizes him by the neck and says, you're my man. And so Procopio goes away. But here's what uh, Vasquez has put together. He's got Clodovio Chavez, who is kind of the enforcer. He's the lieutenant, right? He's going to be sort of taking Soto's place. And as far as the leadership role. And there's a Chilean named Leva who has been told, you're part of the team because you have a place that's near where we want to raid. We'll be using your place as our headquarters and really what's going on is Vasquez is seducing Leva's wife Rosario. Okay, you also have uh, Romuldo Gonzalez and you have Teodoro Moreno who is one of Vasquez's uh, cousins. So Here's what's going to be happening. We're going to have the um, gang come in August 26th, 1873, and they're going to raid the town. And I got to show you some features of you know, the town. Okay, the yellow building over there, that's the current store. It's also the post office for Piscinas. And this is Highway 25. That's the New Idria Road. So that would have gone up to the mine. And now we're going to get just a little more of the tour so that we know what's happening. Okay, so we've just uh, stepped along New Idria Road a bit. Right there where the monument is. Over my shoulder, like where I'm pointing, there would have been at the corner the hotel that was built by uh, Snyder, who basically owned everything around here. Next to that would have been Snyder's store. Going that way a little bit, that would have been the livery stable. Over here, across the road, that would have been the black, blacksmith shop. All right, so there's the layout of the town. Here's what's going to happen. August 26th, the gang splits up. And what ends up happening is Vasquez and Chavez, they go up the road. They're going to hit the stage. And I think uh, Teodoro Moreno went with them. Over in the saloon here, you have Abdon Leva and Romulo Gonzalez. The stage is pulling up, drops off mail. And Vasquez looks and he sees that the guy riding um, next to the driver, he knows the guy. He's actually, and he actually will tell the others, you know, it's like, I, I, I couldn't do anything because he's always treated me as a gentleman. Plus, the guy's family happened to be in the stage. So, okay, that part of the plan has already gone south. Well now, in the saloon, Leva and Gonzalez, they're ordering a few drinks, they're having some cigars, 
and they're getting ready to rob the place and they're telling everybody to get down on the ground and a Basque sheep herder walks in and he doesn't speak Spanish he doesn't understand what's going on and one of them yells at him to get on the ground and I personally and apparently waved a gun at him my money is on Gonzalez and he probably did it well the sheep herder panics and he runs and as he runs out Gonzalez shoots him well it doesn't kill him right away so he staggers towards the hotel and now guests are seeing this people are going into a blind panic and um, Apparently someone is trying to bar the door and someone steps out another door of the hotel and is shot by another gang member. I think it was Teodoro Moreno. Now here's the problem. Vasquez didn't want any shooting. So he's kind of freaking out and he's yelling at everybody. Well, they managed to net, you know, a bunch of cash and jewelry and stuff. and. They take off, and by the way, there's now going to be a huge price on Vasquez's head and pretty much anybody in the gang. And this is going to haunt Vasquez because when he is captured later, even though he says he didn't kill anybody, someone died in the commission of a felony. Chavez sticks with Vasquez. He is the loyal lieutenant. The gang isn't terribly loyal to the rest of the gang. Teodoro Moreno, during the long manhunt, he can't keep up. His horse is not very strong. It's tired. Moreno drinks too much and is tired. And Moreno, this is Vasquez's cousin. He gets abandoned by Vasquez and the rest of the gang. Bye, cousin. And leaves Moreno to his fate, which is to be caught, be tried, and to be sent to San Quentin. Okay, the manhunt's continuing. Well, here we are in September. Leva wants to leave the gang. He hadn't bargained on the violence that was going to be happening at Tres Pinos. He wanted out. Besides, he thinks, quite rightly, that his wife is having an affair with Vasquez. Well, in September, he catches the two of them together in bed draws his revolver, points it at Vasquez, and Vasquez is showing remorse, maybe because a revolver's pointed at him. At this point, Chavez comes into the room, points his gun at Leva, and says, if you shoot Vasquez, I will kill you. Leva puts his gun away, and Vasquez is still acting remorseful, and Leva and his wife Rosario and the kids are allowed to spend the night there and then in the morning they leave. And uh, what's going to end up happening is Leva is going to turn himself in. Remember how I'd said that Vasquez was like a father figure to Chavez. Chavez learned a lot of his lessons from Vasquez and he saw what happened to Jose Castro, that saloon owner, and like, okay, yeah, he got hung, big deal. And he saw how Vasquez was willing to abandon his cousin, Teodoro Moreno, when things were getting tough. Well, now at one point, there's Chavez running around with a guy named uh, Androtillo, and they rob a sheep herder in uh, Cholome Valley and now there's a pursuit that follows and Chavez now abandons uh, Androtillo. Why? And of course the law takes care of him but now Chavez is going to ride on to meet up with the gang again and this time they're going to go to a place named Kingston. Behind me that's a park called Layton uh, Kingston Park. It's in the town of Layton, or Lawton. I haven't figured out how it's pronounced yet. 
This originally began as a settlement called Whitmore's Ferry. And this is along the Kings River on the South Bank. And uh, over time, this, start, this little settlement starts to grow. By the 1870s, it is now the town of Kingston. And it was being referred to as the busiest little town in Fresno County. And it's just a little ways from Millerton, okay? Which also doesn't exist anymore. This town's developed prosperity. It's got businesses, it's got hotels, or a hotel. And this prosperity is not going unnoticed. Now it's been four months since the Tres Pinos tragedy. And Vasquez and Chavez and the gang, which is now numbering like a dozen, they are looking for a hit. They are looking for a job they can pull off. And what they're going to do four months after the Tres Pinos disaster, after dark, uh, people are saying, eh, it happened about 7 p.m. The gang crossed the bridge. The bridge has replaced the ferry. They crossed on foot, and they had lengths of rope, because they're going to be tying people up, and what they're going to do is they're going to station guys outside of different businesses to keep watch. And the rest are going to go inside and they're going to rip people off. And most people are being cooperative because they're afraid. There was a guy from Vesalia who wasn't cooperative. He got pistol whipped and so he got robbed anyway. Um, but now people are noticing, some of the townsfolk are noticing, hey, who are these strangers standing outside these different businesses? And they figure it out. Oh, the town's getting robbed. You got a whole bunch of citizens now with guns and they're waiting and as Vasquez and his gang come out the shooting starts and the guys are on foot so they're booking for the bridge and what ends up happening is uh, three of them get wounded. Uh, there was a shepherd named Ramon uh, who was hired just temporarily and he got it real bad. Um, there was one of Vasquez's cousins, uh, Francisco Gonzalez, and Clodovio Chavez gets hit uh, with a bullet above the right knee. They get out of there. Most of the gang heads in one direction. They're heading north to a place called uh, Rancho de los Californios, I believe. And one of the other guys, uh, Someone named Ignacio, he decides, oh no, those guys are dumb, I'm going down the river. So he heads down the river and he's going to end up getting caught and he's going to be brought back. And, uh, you know, he's going to confess, yes, it was me, I did it, you know, I was with these other guys, you know, I am bad. So now the rest of the gang, they're up in their hiding place and they're splitting the money. And uh, Francisco Gonzalez says he is going to go take uh, Chavez with him and they're going to head to a place called uh, Pozo Chane to kind of heal up. Uh, other members of the gang just go back to being vaqueros and being shepherds and Vasquez takes five guys and they head south. And they're going to wait to kind of heal up. And what's going to happen is Vasquez, while he's down south and he's kind of adventuring, he's, you know, he goes over to Vasquez Rocks, which ends up getting named for him, hides out there, and he goes to Elizabeth Lake. And, um, you know, he may like flirt with going into LA, but, eh, you know, that's not really, you know, going to work out that well. And now he's going to bring back a couple of the gang members with him. Uh, Las Bicuna and Isidro Padilla, who had been involved in the Kingston robbery. And they're going to go over to Poso Chani. And, okay, Chavez is pretty much healed up. So 
now Vasquez is going to leave the other guys with his cousin. And they are going to move on to, uh, you know, go over to uh, basically the uh, Mojave Desert area. And now we're going to hit a different place. So, there's still more to tell about Clodovio Chavez. Is now the trail of Chavez and his leader, Tiburcio Vasquez, leads into the Mojave Desert. So I'm going there next. I hope you'll stick with me on my journey.